women, mothers, um, uh, throughout the Bible. I mean, where would we be? Where would the church be today uh, without uh, mothers? Mothers of Zion. The Bible talks about mothers in Zion. And um, my, my mind goes back to um, the book of Acts. Um, after Jesus Christ was taken into heaven, um, the disciples were in great fear and trepidation because what they were normally do um, with someone like Jesus when they um, when he was crucified they would normally round up the rest of the followers and have them killed as well and um, the Bible tells us that the, these guys were really in hiding because they were fearful what could happen to them but the women the mothers when you read the book of Acts the Bible says that they joined the women, and uh, most of those women were mothers. And, and what were they doing? They were praying. They were praying. They're the lifeblood of the church. Um, uh, women, and, and when it comes to prayer, when it comes to intercessory, um, and the Bible used typologies like when Zion travails, she brings forth, and that is pertaining to prayers, and uh, women giving birth and travailing, and that same grace is on women, especially on women mothers, uh, to intercede and to travail in the time of fear. And the disciples were in fear, the Bible says, and they joined the women in prayer. And uh, the women had been praying and interceding, uh, I believe, for the disciples, apostles, and obviously what was going on. And they remembered also the promise of God that Jesus said, go and tarry in the upper room. Don't go anywhere, don't go into ministry, don't go and preach until you are in true with power from on high. And uh, when the power of God came down, the Bible said there were 120. And, and there were men as well as women. Uh, that uh, were in that upper room or in that temple or in the temple uh, at that time. And uh, so, so thank God for um, uh, mothers. I, I remember growing up in church and um, remembering these women uh, and they were mostly, if not all of them were mothers um, and how they used to be pouring out uh, their soul at the front of the altar before the service. The morning service, the evening service, it was the women that got there early and they will be on their knees, they will be uh, prostrate on the floor, they will be crying and, and they will just be asking God for his anointing, they will be asking God to show up, they will be asking the Holy Spirit to move and, and believe you me, when the service starts, the Holy Spirit moved because of women. Because of mothers that uh, were travailing, they, they, were, they, they got up hold of the horns of the altar and they began to call on God and call down God. Amen. And I, I remember as a, as a child w watching this, I remember my own mother who is gone to receive her eternal reward and believe you me, she, is, uh, she has received a, a wonderful crown of, of life because I know that I am standing here uh, today as a result of my mother. It was all the grace of God, but God used my mother and she will pray, she will cry out. There were six of us um, uh, as children and uh, every time I would come out of my, whatever time I came out of my bedroom, my mother got to me. She would start with the oldest and I was, uh, where was I? Next to first, second. Uh, third, <laughs> the third, fourth, or whatever. Anyway, yeah, and, and uh, I would always come out hearing, Oh Lord, and remember Derek, Oh Lord, and she would just go, Oh, and I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to get saved. I didn't want to become a Christian because I thought, Lord, save my oldest brother. If not him, the next one. I was the third. You know, and I thought, Lord, save them first, now I'll give my life to you. But I heard her crying out um, and, and, and pleading on God and calling upon his mercy to, uh, to save her. I remember going downstairs, because um, the, the rooms were upstairs, and going downstairs, hearing my mother, and I thought, oh, I 
hate to hear this, but thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God for praying mothers. Faithful mothers that regardless when their children are playing up and being out of order and being rebellious, they don't allow what they see and what they hear to determine them whether they should pray or not. They're not deterred by that. And my mother was not deterred, although I used to say to her, turn to her and say, I hate church. One day I just said, I hate church. And that was all demons anyway. <laughs> and uh, my mother just looked at me and did not say anything at all. She just continued to pray. And out of her prayer, she gave birth in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And I, I couldn't run anymore. Now she has gone on. She's with the Lord for a good number of years since 2000. And I know that she's gone on to an eternal reward. And um, I, I cannot forget uh, my mother. I cannot forget the prayers uh, that she prayed. And I want to encourage every mother here and, uh, and uh, grandmother and great-grandmother with these great children and great-grandchildren um, that your prayers are effective. Regardless when you pray for your children, you pray for situations, and it seems to get worse. It's just the enemy ranching up because he knows he's fighting out of a position of defeat. But if he can deter you or discourage you, get you in fear because of what you see, and then you start praying, then the kingdom of darkness, the fallen angels, will be able to advance. Let me just say, uh, it's got the um, wind. I've got the windshield on this. Okay. And so, um, and so I, I just want to encourage you, mother, listen, do not stop praying. Um, the effectual, fervent prayer uh, of a righteous person, it does avail much. As long as you continue to be faithful, you continue to walk uprightly before God, your prayers has tremendous effect in the kingdom of darkness, pushing back the cloud of darkness that will try and overtake and succumb those children and people that you are praying for. And um, uh, everything I remember uh, uh, about my mother, uh, very strict, very strict home, we were brought up in and I thank God because now you can look back and you can thank God, wow, if she wasn't that strict with me. Whoa, what would have become um, of me today? All those wonderful beatings. <laughs> Hallelujah. All about the way overboard many times. You know those Jamaican beatings. All right. <laughs> but thank God. And I, you know, I say, God, thank you, Doc, for those beatings because I really deserved it. I was really rebellious. I would gave my mother a hard time. Um, but obviously when I became a Christian and, um, and God called me to the ministry, uh, she can see the fruit of her labor. She rejoiced. She was so happy. She was so proud because she remembered those years of toiling, those years of praying. And, 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 and the discipline and the correction and the nurturing that she poured into really all of us. Uh, 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 amazing. And, 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 and thank God I had my father there, but uh, uh, she's the one that taught us to sew. She's the one that taught us to wash. She's the one that taught us to always to cook and everything. Come around the cooker. Let me show you how to cook rice. Let me show you. He keeps stirring it in. He keeps doing this. Now let me show you how to sew. And my mother used to sew me how to sew so I can sew my own the pockets which had holes in there. And all this. And then show you how to wash. Now to use the washing machine. And my dad used to just reinforce that so we had no choice. Hallelujah. That was my mother. Hallelujah. A mother in Zion. Amen. And um, a, 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 a general in God's army. And uh, so proud of my mother. And, and I cannot wait to see her again. It's beautiful. So, so, so you mothers, that, that um, uh, there's time you get fed up, there's time you get angry, you know, and you, you, you're disappointed. But don't give up. Listen, you must walk. And I say that to everyone. Walk 
by faith and not by sight. Understand that your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren are all offspring from you. And so God wants every one of them in heaven. They have your DNA. And so your prayers, I cannot, uh, um, um, I cannot stress and expound enough that your prayers have tremendous effect. As my mind even goes back to the early times in church and, and, and so forth, and just to see all these mothers at the altar and going to prayer meetings and, and uh, church service or uh, meetings before the church start as well. We will get into cars and cram people in old cars and they will go to the house and they will be in the sitting room there and children were seen but not heard. <laughs> and back then, you know, we used to do all this kind of, we used to mingle what was going on, we used to jump up and down, ah, oh, Jesus, you know, as children, we used to do the same thing, <laughs> you know, we used to get that boom on the head and, and stuff like that, and, 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 and these people would be gathered in the, in the sitting room there, which is the living room, you know, and they'll be crying out to God, all these mothers, don't be discouraged. Don't be fearful because your children are not yet, or some of your children are not yet in the kingdom of God. Your grandchildren are doing this, your grandchildren are doing that, they're going astray, they're involved in this. Listen, the devil is a liar, the devil is defeated. Yeah. And, and uh, if God is ever calling upon, especially uh, the mothers to be praying, is now. God is calling upon the church to be praying like never before. In such a time that we are living in, what is God saying? This is what I heard from my spirit when I woke up. The spirit of God is saying, tell my people I am coming soon. Tell my people I'm coming back again as I said. In the book of John, chapter 14, Jesus says, behold, I'm going away to prepare mansions for you. That where I am, you will also be. Jesus is coming very soon. And he spoke about the things that would take place before he came back, comes back. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquake. You know, I didn't realize that there are... Um, about 55 earthquakes around the world every single day. You know, Jesus says when he spoke about uh, wars and rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, then he spoke about pestilence, infectious disease. What we are seeing today, the coronavirus is an infectious disease. It's a pestilence. But Jesus says, listen, in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, Jesus said, uh, these are the beginning of birth prayers. And I, I mentioned this last week, and I just want to just, for the next few minutes, just, I went back to this birth prayer because, again, the typology there, the analogy is there is that of a woman in travail. Now, when she is about to give birth, okay, there's labor pains that comes, right? And then the closer to giving birth, those labor pains increases. Yes. Now the, the magnitude of the labor pain, the pain increases. And so although we can look back in history and, and, and see there was plague, and so there was plagues and there was all these uh, wars that, that was going on, but what we are seeing, we're going to see a greater magnitude back to back. Back to back, we're just going to hear of tragedies and they're going to be happening across the world that the ears of humanity are going to tingle. Their hearts are going to grip them with fear, wondering what is coming on the earth. Jesus said to the Christians, look up for your redemption. My redemption is drawing near. When you see these things, look up. In other words, have hope. Have courage. Be in faith. Don't be in fear and trepidation. Be in faith because I am coming soon. With this coronavirus,
virus and the change that are going on from day to day, our minds cannot even process what is happening. It seems so unbelievable that just what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, nothing what we're seeing today is now happening. We would have never seen, we could have never seen what is taking place now, four weeks ago. Because uh, the changes that are taking, uh, that are coming uh, uh, upon the earth and are coming uh, to this country with the laws and things that are changing, we just think, what on earth is going on? The majority of churches, as we know, are not even uh, worshipping today in their um, uh, buildings. I just want to say this, because they're pretty those are probably watching online that um, could not go to their church service. Listen, the church is not a building. Absolutely. Uh, we've got to remember the church is not a building. In other words, we don't need, or God doesn't really need a building as such. Because in the book of Acts where there was persecution, the Bible says they went from house to house. The church was in houses, and in Jerusalem, there was about 70,000, they said, uh, believers. And they were meeting in houses. We don't know what could happen tomorrow. We don't know what could happen next week, whether we'll be here. Whether the government would have to say, because of people not taking precautions or whatever, and the virus is getting out of hands, that they would have to bring the nation in a lockdown. If that happens, uh, we're going to be online. And, um, and there will be a handful of people meeting here to pray. God is saying the church must pray. The church must get back to where it should be, in God. We're not where we should be in God. And somehow we, we are obviously praying and hoping that there will be no lockdown. But if there is a lockdown, and one of the things that came to me very strongly concerning uh, this uh, uh, church is not being able to meet for a good number of months. Churches. But I've not been preaching the message of the cross. Not been preaching Christ and him crucified. But preaching motivational, uh, 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 motivational speaking and, and, and prosperity. Uh, that's going to mean nothing to many that no longer in those churches. And when the church resumes, you watch. When the churches, most of the churches resume, these mega churches, they're going to have a huge drop in number. When the law says in the last days that everything that, that could be shaken is going to be shaken, it's going to be shaken, except the word of God, the word, the true word of God, those that have been preaching the word of God. Hear me, church, a lot of these mega churches that are just preaching prosperity, the prosperity gospel and motivational speaking and self-help messages, which is not, it is not the gospel. In other words, they've made the emphasis money, the main the emphasis wealth, health, and prosperity that they've made their ministry in that area. They've built their ministry upon that. And what's happening today, church? This is the storm. This is a storm that is coming now against those people. The people are losing their jobs. They don't know what they're going to do. How are they going to get by all those self-employed uh, people? Uh, but out there, this lockdown, what's it going to do for uh, those who um, uh, drive um, uh, minicabs and, um, and use their cars uh, uh, with, with Uber and those other companies? And, and, and there is no uh, money coming in. I was listening to this guy on, on, on the radio. He says, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I said, he says, the only money that is made uh, today is £10. And he doesn't know how he's going to feed his family. That's why church, this is the opportunity for the church to arise and to be in every street corner, to be in the underground, the tree, the, the, uh, the shops, and to declare the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. On videos, on, on, on social media, you're seeing people in, in shops. They're preaching the gospel. And God is saying, as I said last week in Psalms, in, in Isaiah 61, arise. Stop being in fear. God is with his people. Be not dismayed. Be not troubled. God told us these things will come upon the earth. We must begin to apply God's protection. If God is able to heal, if God is able to deliver, listen, God is able to protect. And even if the virus does come on us, listen, it will not have its intended purpose. What am I saying? 
you will not die before time. You will fulfill your days by God's grace. Whatever God will allow is for his glory. It will not have its intended purpose, which is to snuff you out, which is to cut your life short. God came that we might have life, and so we speak life. Remember, the power of death and life. Power of death. Notice it, it, it used the word death before the power of life and death, but it used the word death because we have a lot of negativity. We live in a negative world, and we are always coming against death. Death against the gospel. Death against speaking. And we must come against that. We must declare. We must speak against the spirit of death. And bring that down. Listen, you must understand that the power of death and life God has put in your mouth. And the, the, uh, the next slide says, and whatsoever you say, you will have. You will have the fruits thereof. In other words, what you are saying, you will have. What you are saying, you will see. And so, church, I want you to be speaking life when you are walking on the streets. I want you to be speaking life where you are uh, in your area of uh, your, your neighbor, where you live, where you work. You are speaking, you are now carrying God's presence. Listen, and wherever the soles of your feet shall tread, God has given that into your hands. You are pushing back this tide of death and you're declaring life in the name of Jesus. So nothing is done without faith. We must believe that God is with our mouth and God is looking to the church. He's not looking to the government. He's looking to his people to make a difference. When we hear prognosis and statistics of how many people are going to die, the spirit of fear jumps on that and comes upon people. And it's coming upon God's people. Fear. This is where we refute that in the name of Jesus. That's their professional prognosis. That may be a fact. But God's word transcends. Amen. And so we must speak what God says. Yes. I'm believing for a, a, a drop in this area. Since Kenton and Chelsea has the highest coronavirus, why can't we reverse it? Through prayer. Yes. God says, speak to the mountain. Speak to this darkness. What do we believe? And I'm praying that we're going to see a, hear of a sudden drop in the infection rate of coronavirus in Kensington and Chelsea. No evil shall come near our dwelling place. Let's bow our heads, shall we? Hallelujah.